Hey, NPC family. I wanted to share with you something that I read this past week and was an encouragement to me, and I hope that it will be to you as a part of our midweek encouragement for this week. It comes from Psalm 9, verses 7 through 10. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for justice, and he judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with uprightness. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. The context of Psalm 9 is adversity. It's times of trouble, as David says in verse 9. And what David wants to remind us is that it's especially in times of trouble that we need to remember that God is enthroned as king. As it says in verse 7, the Lord sits enthroned forever. And what that means for you and me is that whatever adversities we are facing in our lives, whatever troubles we are going through, whether it be a situation at work that is turning our lives upside down or, or physical pain or deterioration or the continued adversity of the pandemic or any other kind of suffering we may undergo, none of the troubles that we are facing dethrone God. None of them unseat or overthrow him. Now, this doesn't mean that everything will go just as we planned, uh, the way that we want, but it does mean that God reigns over it all. Jesus puts it this way in John 16, 33. He says, in the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart. Your Savior, Jesus, the one who gave his life for you, he now sits enthroned at the Father's right hand, endowed with all authority in heaven and on earth. He is king forever, and none of the troubles of your life or mine can unseat him. And that's good news in times of difficulty. We need to remember that. Well, I'm looking forward to being with you all on Sunday. We're going to keep working our way through Galatians this week. I will be preaching on Galatians 4, verses 12 through 20. So you can go ahead and read that. Let me encourage you to do that uh, in advance and take some time to meditate on that. We will have our ordinary worship arrangements. So two services at 8.30 and 10.30, they're going to be indoors, both of them. We will have a 175-person uh, capacity as we have. And uh, we're going to be observing the Lord's Supper this week. So we'll hear the gospel through the preaching of the word, and we will see and taste and touch the emblems of the gospel in the Lord's Supper. So let me encourage you to prepare for that. And let me just leave you with uh, these verses from the end of Psalm 10. Actually, scholars, many think that Psalms 9 and 10 originally were one psalm since there are many themes that are consistent across them. And also it sort of the Psalms 9 and 10, they form an acrostic together. So uh, listen here to the end of Psalm 10. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations perish from his land. O oh Lord, you hear the desire of the afflicted. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear. God will strengthen our hearts and he will incline his ear to us, his people in Christ. See you soon.